Hey guys, Chris from Hockey Tutorial here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the difference between the original Mako 1s and the brand new Mako 2s that are going to be coming out in June of 2014. Let's get started. So now taking a look at the difference between these two boots. The way we'll do this video is we'll start at the base of the Mako 2s, work our way up, and talk about what's been changed when compared to the original Mako 1s. So taking a look at the steel that you get with the Mako 2s, this is Easton's ES4 stainless steel. That's the stainless steel that sits slightly higher at the back portion than at the front, leaving you at that aggressive stance, so you're um, in the perfect position to be able to utilize speed and explosiveness on the ice. Moving up from there, taking a look at the holder, this is Easton's redesigned CN holder, which is completely different to any other line of um, holders that we've seen Easton produce. This is uh, the holder that can only be currently found on the Easton Mako family of skates. Now, again, this holder's had an increase of height, which allows you to have a much greater angle of attack for the puck, which means you can get much lower and much deeper into your turns. Moving on to the Mako skates, the original ones, this is the exact same uh, holder and also the same steel that you'll find on the Mako 2s. So if you've been able to pick up some extra steels for your Mako 1s, you don't have to worry about having uh, not being able to use them on the 2s because it's the same holder, same blade, you'll be good to go there. Moving up from there, taking a look at the outsole on the Mako 2s. Now with the Mako family of skates, they don't have an outsole as such. The actual outsole is built into the body of the boot itself. Now that's going to give you two main advantages. The first one being you're going to get a much more direct feel for the ice when you're in these boots. And secondly, the amount of energy transfer that you get in these skates is going to be through the roof. So any movement that you make inside the boot is going to be able to be directed directly onto the holder and the blade because it doesn't have to go through that extra outsole at the bottom over there. So responsiveness in these boots is going to be fantastic. Comparing that to the Mako ones or the original ones, you can see that they have the exact same principle where the outsole is built into the body of the skate, so again, no changes over there. The Mako ones also feature those holes or perforations at the base of the skate that you can see there. Uh, those help with a few things. First one, it's gonna be um, it's gonna be for added comfort, so any moisture or heat that enters the skate is able to exit through those perforations or holes, and it's also gonna help the skates dry a bit better. So when your skates get wet after you've used them, you get a nice good circulation of air there so it'll dry much more effectively, and it's the exact same thing that you can find on the Mako 2s as well. So there's no changes over there. So now taking a look at the quarter package of these two skates, which is where we're going to find the majority of the changes that Easton have made. Looking at the Mako 1s, you can see they feature the original Mako colours with the fluorescent orange. And when we move over onto the Mako 2s, they have a much more subtle design with silver and uh, black mesh outlines, um, sort of neutralising some of that Mako orange that we're used to. But in terms of what they've changed, the way the skate's going to perform and the way the skate's going to feel is what we're going to come to now. Easton have completely remanufactured the grade of carbon fibre used to design the quarter package in the Mako 2s. The first thing that that's going to do is it's going to make the quarter package in the 2s much, much stiffer than what we saw in the Mako 1s. So any of the players that might have been a bit too big and a bit too heavy to be able to get the desired amount of support out of the quarter package on the Mako 1s is going to be able to have plenty of that in the Mako 2s. The second thing that that does is that it's going to improve the durability of these skates. The Mako ones might have had a couple of problems um, with durability that some people might have experienced. For my, personally myself, my Mako ones along the back portion, the carbon fibre strands over here started to break down quite quickly. But with the Mako 2s being manufactured from a different grade of carbon fibre, this problem isn't going to be persisting in these new boots. Because of all these changes that they've made, this brings us to the third point about the quarter package. It's going to last much, much longer than the previous skates that we saw from Eastern Mako. So taking a look at the back portions of the skate, we'll see something that Easton introduced for the first time on the original Mako skates, which is the extendon guard. Now what this does is it allows the skater to have their um, tendon flex back as they're skating, which is what um, Easton sort of uh, were focusing on with the Mako line of skates, which was natural movement and speed, which is exactly what this tendon allows you to do. In terms of how they've adapted this new tendon on the Mako 2s, there isn't a whole lot of difference, except that I've noticed that it's maybe a little bit more resistant when it's moving backwards than the original Mako 1 um, extendon guard. Another change that they made, which is quite good but very subtle, is the bolts that hold the um, tendon guard in and the bolts that hold the um, blade in on the holder are going to use the exact same tool to be able to remove the both of them because both of these are, of course, um, replaceable and removable. On the original Mako ones, the tool that you needed to be able to remove this extendon guard was completely different to the one that you needed to remove the blade. So it's nice to see that Easton are making it a little bit easier for us to be able to keep our skates going for a much longer time. And of course, when we need to switch these out, it's nice and convenient because we'll have the tool inside our box. So now taking a look at the way they've been able to adapt the tongue for the new Mako 2s. Looking at the Mako 1s, you can see that the uh, previous tongue that they had featured a metatarsal guard along over here, which is this plastic insert that prevents lace bite. You can see it's very, very thick and it was quite restricting um, from my personal experience with it. It took quite a bit of time to be able to break it in and get it to be able to flap forward. But on the new Mako 2s, 
You can see this wide little metatarsal guard is the new version of it. It's much, much more narrow, much more streamlined. Um, and what that means is that it's gonna improve the amount of comfort that you get inside these skates and of course allow the tongue to flex and forward much, much better, which is gonna tie into Easton's philosophy on natural movement on the ice with their Mako skates. They've also beefed up the foams inside the tongue, so you're gonna get much better comfort and also greater protection against things like stick slashes and impacts from pucks and sticks on the ice. Now taking a look at the inside of the skates where we can find some of the changes that Easton have made to the liners. The original Mako 1s, the liners weren't so durable. When compared to the Mako 2s, Easton have again remanufactured the liners inside here to offer much better durability and much greater comfort. What they've also added is much more thermoresponsive foams, so when these skates are baked, you're gonna get a, a glove-like fit once you put these skates on. Taking a quick look at the original Mako 1s, uh, one of the issues that they had was the inside liners broke down a little bit too quickly and also some of the um, padding around the sides could cause quite sore spots even after baking. So the fact that they've introduced um, a completely remanufactured liner with more thermoreactive foams means that you're going to get a much, much more enhanced fit and all of the older problems that we saw in the Mako 1s aren't going to be present in the new Mako 2s. Coming out of the skate and taking a look at the top part of the neck, you can see that they've added some additional foams over here. This is the exact same thing that they had on the original Mako ones, but it's nice to see that they've continued that. So when you're taking very hard turns, being aggressive on your edges, the neck of the skate isn't going to be irritating the top of your foot because of these nice pads and foams that they've added to the top portion there. So taking a quick look at the back portions of the skates, one of the things that I really liked that Easton introduced on the Mako line was the asymmetrical design which basically means the inside of the skate's neck sits slightly higher, five millimeters higher than the outside. The way that works is that when you're striding or skating, you push off of the inside portion of the skate. So by making it slightly higher, you have a greater surface to push off of, meaning that you're gonna be able to generate much more power in every stride. But the outside has been reduced in its height because when you're taking sharp turns and being very aggressive on your corners or your edges, the um, neck and the side over here can interfere with you being able to get very, very low on the ice. So by reducing it by five millimeters, again, working on that natural range of motion that Easton like to promote in these skates over here means that you're gonna be a lot more agile and a lot more maneuverable in these boots over here. So last but not least, we'll also be taking a quick look at the footbeds you get with these skates. Starting off with the Makos, you can see that they have a pretty standard uh, foam footbed. It was fairly thin. It offered a decent amount of comfort, but there was nothing really special about this one over here. Moving on to the ones that you get with the Mako 2s, this is the Ortholite footbeds. They're much, much thicker, offer a lot more support and comfort, and the base of these footbeds also has a, that um, sort of tacky sandpaper type material to keep it planted to the base of the skate to prevent any sort of slipping around inside there, which is pretty good to see. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully this video has been able to highlight some of the changes that you can expect to find in the new Mako 2s that will be coming out shortly. If this video has been helpful, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps me out and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date on any of the latest videos that I post. If you want more information on these two skates, there'll be a link down below in the video description to hockeytutorial.com where you'll be able to find a lot more detail on these two skates. Thanks again guys, stay tuned and take care till next time.